Web development in 2025 is crazy. There are so many tools, frameworks, and libraries to choose from that it's hard to know what you should be building your app with. So let me introduce you to the tech stack of 2025 so that you can launch your unicorn SaaS business idea and retire as a billionaire before the year ends. Let's get to it. This tech stack is going to include five key components and technologies, a web development framework, a CSS framework, a database, an authentication provider, and a method of accepting payments, because of course we want to make some money. And the best part is that you can host this entire stack with no upfront costs and no monthly costs, depending on the size of your project. Next.js is my go-to web development framework because it enables us to build front-end and back-end functionalities within the same code base. It's a powerful React framework that enables both server-side rendering and static site generation. It provides features like automatic routing, API routes, and built-in optimizations for images and fonts. Okay, in English, it means that it's much easier to optimize your websites by loading the content on the server instead of in the browser. It also makes it easier to add in backend functionalities to your projects without having to build a separate backend application. And it makes it easier to create prettier user interfaces that load faster. Pair it with a CSS framework like Tailwind and you've got a pretty useful way of building a web app. Tailwind is my go-to CSS framework that provides a utility-first approach to CSS, giving you small composable classes that you can combine to make any design. Instead of writing traditional CSS, you use pre-built classes directly inside of your HTML. This makes styling much faster and more maintainable, but does result in longer class names that can go out of hand really quickly. Next.js projects can actually include Tailwind right out of the box. So it makes it really easy to get started. Using this command, you can create your Next.js TypeScript app. You can then select yes to use Tailwind CSS, and then just click through each of these depending on your preferences. Now, whenever I start a new project, I like to set up my folders so that I can keep everything organized. For a Next.js project, this is the typical folder structure that I like to work with. Inside of my source folder, I have the app folder, which contains all of the routes. Both screens and API routes can be included in here, and this is done automatically by Next.js. I also create a components folder that I can use to store reusable components, such as buttons, headers, forms, and more. Essentially, any visual element that I'm going to use multiple times, or is perhaps a little bit too large to store in the main component, I'm going to put it in here. This is because I want to keep my root files as clean and as clutter-free as possible. It just helps with organization. Next, I have my database folder. Because this is a full stack project, I'm also working with database models for my API routes. So I store all of the database models in here. We'll talk about databases later on in the video. Inside of the interfaces folder, I can store all of my custom TypeScript types that I might use throughout the project. The lib folder is used to store any utility functions and helper code that I might need throughout the project. So think of API client configurations or reusable functions that are maybe used multiple times. And finally, the middleware folder contains any middleware functions that we create. With my project structure set up, I can now start building out my screens. I've got a simple landing page here as well as a post screen. Okay, sure, it may not be the next billion dollar unicorn that I'm dreaming of, but it's the start of a template that you're going to find really useful. Because you and I are interested in building functional software, we need to add in some backend functionalities. And we can do this using Next.js roots. To keep things simple, I like to store all of my Next.js API endpoints inside of an API folder. Inside of this API folder, I can define my roots and start writing the functionality for my endpoints. These API endpoints can be used to do just about anything, such as read and write to a database, interact with third-party services, or create any awesome functionalities that you can think of for your project. Now, pretty much every project is going to need a database. So for this template, I'm going to use MongoDB. MongoDB is a NoSQL database that stores data in flexible JSON-like documents. Unlike traditional SQL databases, MongoDB doesn't require a fixed schema, which can be both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it's nice to have a flexible database, but on the other hand, it's nice to have something that forces you to input data that is of the correct shape. That's why I like to pair it with the Mongoose ORM, which enables me to enforce a schema within my JavaScript or TypeScript projects, which is more than fine considering that all of the functionality is built within the same code base anyway. So I wouldn't need to worry about other applications putting incorrectly formatted data into my database. If I did have multiple applications within this project, that's where I'd want my database schema to be enforced by the database instead of by the application code. For the project in this video, I need to create a database model for posts so that my users can retrieve and create posts from the front end using the API endpoints that I've created. Creating a Mongo schema is pretty simple. If you're working with TypeScript, you first need to create an interface of the object, and then you can create the Mongo schema object like so. 
You can then export this model so that it can be imported into other parts of your project. So now inside of my create post endpoint, I can save the data that has been submitted. Also inside of the get post endpoint, I can retrieve the posts from the database and then filter or sort them however I like. This is actually really good so far. We've got a basic web app that allows us to view and submit posts. There's just one problem. Anyone can access this data. Next, we're going to need to add authentication to our project because of course, we want to enable our users to sign up and log into their own account. Instead of building our own authentication, which can take a very long time, and if we get it wrong, could put our users at risk, I prefer to go with the option of a third-party authentication provider. This is where Auth0 comes into our tech stack. Now, I've been using Auth0 for a number of years now, which is why I'm super excited to say that today, they are sponsoring this video. Auth0 handles all aspects of user authentication for your projects, and they've got a pretty sizable free tier that enables you to have up to 25,000 monthly active users per project. That is a lot of users, meaning you won't need to pay a cent until your app is already booming with popularity and you're making a bit of cash. It also supports third-party logins so that you can let users log in with Google, GitHub, and more at the click of a button. Plus, you can add custom domains, giving your login page a fully branded look with your website's URL. Implementing Auth0 into your project is pretty simple. Once you've signed up for a free account, you can create a new tenant for your project and then create a new application inside of your tenant. Now, because we're using Next.js, we're going to select regular web application and then we can click Next.js to be given an easy setup guide. Following the setup guide is the best way to do it. And then in under a few minutes, you've got a working authentication flow that looks great, is secure and is free. If you like the look of what you've seen so far with Auth0, you can sign up to their free tier today and start building with no upfront costs. I'll leave a link in the description for you to find out more. Finally, to complete our ultimate tech stack for 2025, we of course want to be making some money. So to do that, we need to implement a method of accepting payments into our project. I typically use Stripe for accepting payments because it's really easy to set up, it's pretty low cost, and it probably has the best developer documentation that I've ever seen from a third-party integration. For clarity, you only get charged by Stripe when you make a sale. So even though it's not technically free, it doesn't cost anything to set up and you only pay a percentage of the revenue that you earn. Using a set of simple APIs and their various packages for different programming languages, it really doesn't take that long to add payment functionalities into your project. You can build highly customizable payment flows that don't even look like they're made with Stripe. But in the interest of time, I usually prefer to use their pre-built checkout pages, which enable me to redirect my users to a secure page so that they can make their payments or subscribe to plans and then be redirected back to my application. Setting up this exact integration here is as easy as creating three API endpoints within your Next.js app. The first endpoint is a post request that is going to be used to generate a Stripe checkout page where your users can subscribe to your SaaS project or pay for your product. Essentially, it returns a URL that you can then redirect the user to so that they can complete the payment. The next endpoint is a GET request that is going to get the user subscription status, which allows us to determine whether they can access paid features or not. If they already have a subscription, we of course don't want to show them a big subscribe button. So instead, we can show them a button that allows them to manage their subscription if they need to. This button is created to the third API endpoint, which generates a Stripe portal link that we can use to redirect the user if they want to manage their subscription. So in three simple API endpoints, we've added production ready payments and billing management to our project so that the money can start rolling in. And that is how you build a web app in 2025. You can then host this stack on a variety of cloud providers with some pretty decent free tiers, or you could even self-host it if you wanted to. I'm going to leave a GitHub link in the description so that if you want to clone the code repository and try out this template for yourself, you can do. If you found this video useful, please leave a like down below hit the subscribe button if you're new and tap the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. Until next time.